Hi everybody, this is Mike Fowler, owner and potter of Fowler's Clay Works. Uh, we're located in the Great Smoky Arts and Crafts community. Great Smoky Mountain National Park is our backdrop here. I'm in the historic Wood Whittlers complex, uh, one of the oldest businesses in Gatlinburg. Uh, it's an honor to be a part of this place, this heritage out here. But I'm going to take you inside here show you a little bit of what we do uh, here at Fowler's Clay Works. Um, and we'll just go on in right now. So as you enter our gallery here, you come in and you'll see a lot of different pieces. We do a lot of functional wear um, with bright colors. Uh, we do have a little bit of earth tone, but always end it with a bright pop. I always like when you go outside and you see things in nature, I mean, it just says, bam, you know, it hits you. Um, I like functional a lot of times, uh, is most of where I go, especially stoneware. Um, it's that setting, you know, you're sitting there and you're eating a meal or having a favorite beverage with that intimate piece. You know, it means something. Um, you know, and, and it's an honor every day we get people that buy these things and come in and it may not have ever been exposed to a handmade craft, uh, pottery, wood or whatever, but you know, they take home a piece and then their, their lives are enriched and they use these things. We hear about it all the time. And you can come in here and you can see more. So we do a lot of seasonal things. Uh, we do things that are representative of the area, uh, flowers, we do a lot of dogwood designs. So each one of these starts with a vessel that I produce. I have a staff artisan that helps uh, her and I will collaborate on the design. And then we'll hand sculpt each piece, we'll put it on there, we'll bring it out, we'll bisfire everything, uh, we'll brush glaze the different pieces, and we'll then wax it. Um, and then I'll get it back, put the background color on it. But right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to break here for a minute. Um, this is my work area. So a lot of times a visitor will come in here and they'll get to watch me make pottery, talk to me about the process. So I spent a lot of time educating, but today I'm going to give you a little insight of, of me working on the wheel. So we'll be back with you here in just a minute. So for these large pieces, I like to begin with about 12 pounds of clay. By measuring, I can keep things pretty close. No, not exact. They're still handmade, but still, you know, it keeps it close enough. So. so I'll kind of just roll this clay around and then start wedging. Wedging kind of evens out the moisture of the clay. It makes it nice and even when I throw it. I don't have to do a lot of wedging to this clay because during the mixing process, one of the thing, the last steps, it runs through a de-airing pug mill. A de-airing pug mill removing air bubbles or whatever. All those little horror stories you heard about pieces blowing up when you were a kid or whatever. But anyways. So now I've got this kind of rounded out. And the next thing I'm gonna do is move to the wheel and start forming some. So, um, so now I'm gonna go ahead and anchor this ball on. And like I said, the first step in, in working with clay on the wheel is getting it centered. So once I anchor this on, I slap a little bit there, kind of help get it in the middle. Make sure it's good and attached to that bat. Okay. All right, I'm gonna bring my wheel up to speed. And at this point, you know, water's my friend. It allows the clay to slide through my hands, move through real easy, doesn't allow friction to build up and thus binding the clay up on my hands and then wrecking the piece. Now, the larger you get, the more kickback you get, so to say. So get this clay centered first. I'm squeezing in from the sides at the bottom here and kind of working that up into a cone. And once I get that up so high, I'll kind of bring this clay back down. And because I'm going 
taller, I'm gonna keep my centered ball of clay a little higher too. So now once, notice it's not wobbling, it's not, it's not fighting me, and this is what we call center. So once the clay is centered, then I'm gonna begin my opening process. All right, so now, as I've gone down, I think I've gotten as far as I wanna go. So I'm gonna smooth out the bottom a little bit. And as you go, you get little pieces that peel off here and there. So I'm gonna take them out. Okay. So I'm gonna use my left hand here and I'm gonna brace the inner wall really good. Now remember, this is a bigger piece, so this takes a lot more pressure. And then here, I'm gonna use the palm of my hand. I'm gonna push in and I'm gonna let the thumb wrap around. So these, I got a nice hold on the top. I'm bracing the inner wall at the bottom with this. I'm gonna push in and then lift up. Okay. Now we're gonna continue with this. See, I'm pushing in and get my clay up above this edge of my hand right here, and right above those fingers. Maintain enough force right there and lift that ridge of clay up, and the rotation of the wheel is what's spreading that clay evenly. All right, so here's what a pot that has been bisque fired looks like. It's pink in color, I can handle it, it doesn't break, but it's still very porous. It draws water up, which it'll draw the glaze up, the water in the glaze, and allow it to then adhere to the side of the pot. Um, so basically, we apply most of our glazes by dipping, and I'll submerge this in like that. Yeah, shake it off. And what I'll do is I'll be able to take this particular piece with a cup, fill the inside of the same glaze, pour it out. Um, and here we, we layer a lot of color, you know, so I might go back with another glaze and put it across the rim and then maybe add another one on that. And then sometimes, or a lot of times I use a spray gun and add in that extra element. Spray gun allows me to fan it out, get different areas of color. Um, and we layer colors because one of the main, one of the mineral ingredients in the glazes that we use in each glaze has what's called a flux. It's what melts the glass. So by layering 
glazes, you interact these different fluxes together and then it really causes these great variations of color, causes them to break up and go wild, uh, even can change colors to a whole new one. Um, so anyways, this is a whole new ball game here. So this is where once you learn to make pottery, then you really got to put some time and effort into this to, and really study your, your, your process and really figure out what's going on in order to end up with a very nice result. So. All right, so once the pots have been taken from bisque, wax, glaze, whole nine yards, whole sheet match, and we load them into one of our several kilns. Um, these are all electric. I like electric. I like oxidation atmosphere. It means we don't alter the, the atmosphere of the kiln at all. We don't reduce the amount of air into it or whatsoever. So that's where a lot of the vi bright, vibrant color comes from. But as you can see, these are cooked. It's e this is even on its way up. And the nice thing about kilns today they usually have computer controllers on them, so and which have preset programs in them. Or as you get more experimental and you really want to start seeing how your glazes move and shake, you can write in your own programs. You can control at different times how fast they go up. You can even control how much they come back down. So which really helps to uh, amplify a glaze's look a lot of times. Uh, you'd be surprised at how much more life you can get out of a glaze just by slowing down the cooling. Um, or even slowing down the ramp up through a certain point. So and there you go. Oh, well, I hope you enjoyed your little tour and demonstration of Fowler's Clayworks. If you're ever in Gatlinburg, t Gatlinburg Tennessee, please come by and see us. Uh, I'll be glad to show you the things I showed you today in this video, talk to you further. Uh, have a great day.